people, bringing ick into your tank seems to be inevitable, but I'm here to tell you that it is possible to have a reef tank that is completely free of this disease. The steps may seem daunting to someone who has never tried it, but I promise you, do it once and you'll see that it isn't as bad as you thought. In fact, you'll spend longer watching these videos than you would actually maintaining a tank transfer series in any given week. You can do this easily in your own home, and at the end of 13 days you will have fish that are essentially assured to be ick-free if you follow the steps. If you'd like to know more about the disease, including where it comes from and how it survives, visit part one of this three-part series. In this video, I'll walk you through each step of the tank transfer process. Let's get to it. Most of the steps in this initial startup you will only need to do for your first attempt at doing TTM. After the first round, you will already have your supplies, locations, and processes in place. Don't be scared off by the seeming complexity of the setup. Just follow the steps and you'll be a pro in no time. Step 1. Determine how big your transfer containers should be. A pair of bonded clowns or a few chromas can easily fit in 5 gallon buckets or 10 gallon tanks. More than one fish can be in the same transfer tank as long as there aren't so many that they are overcrowded or creating too much waste in the three days that they'll be in the bucket. Larger adult fish that need more swimming room should be in longer tanks with more water volume. The buckets should be clean, preferably food safe, and should never have contained harsh chemicals. There should be enough PVC pipes available such that each fish in the tank or bucket has their own place to hide or sleep in. Remember, this is going to be stressful for them, and you should do what you can to help minimize that stress. One tip I would offer is to use white buckets, not orange, such as ones from Home Depot, as we mentioned in one of our previous videos. We recommend plastic containers over glass, because the typical 10-gallon aquariums are harder to handle without breaking, and are more difficult to clean and fully dry between transfers. It also seems as if the fish are more comfortable not feeling completely exposed to everyone who walks past their temporary home, buckets are generally not see-through. Step 2. Have a housing plan for them after the transfer series is done. You cannot put your fish back into the infected tank after the 13-day transfer is complete. Whatever your housing plan is for the remainder of the fallow period, be sure to remember not to bring any live rock, sponges, water, or anything else from the infected tank. Most often they will be going into an uncycled environment and you'll need to keep a careful eye on ammonia levels in their new tank. The original tank should remain fishless with no new additions, that means snails or corals, for 72 days after the fish are removed to ensure the parasite is gone. If you remove your fish and three weeks later you introduce a snail with tomans on it, they could stay on the shell for up to 72 days before being released into the water in search of a fish. Some will say that you can continue to add new invertebrates and corals throughout the fallow period, but that just doesn't make sense with what we know about the parasite's life cycle. For 100% peace of mind, don't add anything new during the fallow period, and if you do, start the clock over. It may be helpful to put a post-it or tape an index card on the tank with the date that the fallow period will end. Step 3. Make sure you have the equipment you need. In addition to two appropriately sized containers, preferably the same, you will also need enough RODI water and salt, or premixed salt water, for the first container to get started, and you'll need to have, make, or buy more for the subsequent transfers. When mixing the water, it's very important that you do not use a power head or bucket that could already be contaminated with the parasite. You'll need two adjustable temperature heaters, this is very important. Do not try to use the standard tropical fish heaters from Walmart that do not have a thermostat. They run too hot for most saltwater fish. You'll need two thermometers, two separate identical sets of PVC pipe for housing, and one clear plastic container for moving the fish from one transfer to the next. You can use a net, however they are harder to clean and dry between transfers and are more stressful for the fish. We recommend using specimen containers, sold on Amazon, which fish tend to swim into much faster than they will ever swim toward a net. It also allows them to remain in water while being moved, and fish with spines will not be caught or damaged by repeated netting.
proper gas exchange is also important, so you'll need to break the surface tension of the water by having one or two air pumps, at least five air stones, and airline tubing. The air stone and used tubing will be thrown away after each transfer, so be prepared to toss them out. Check valves are helpful if the air pump will sit lower than the water line to make sure water doesn't siphon backwards out of the bucket. The arrow on the valve shows the direction of water flow, but if you aren't sure which way to install it, try blowing air into it before it gets wet or dirty. The air will only freely travel one direction, and you should make sure that the air pump is on the side with no resistance. The fish do not need a special light installed, natural daylight will suffice. If you have fish that are known to jump, such as gobies, wrasses, and other dart fish, you can top the bucket with mesh with egg crate on top of it. Step 4. Determine what time of day you can reliably do transfers. There should be no more than 72 hours between each transfer. If you pass 72 hours, you'll have to start over as if it was day one of the transfer series. The first time you do this, it may take you a few hours to get everything ready for the first transfer, so give yourself adequate time. Yes, the fish need to move as soon as possible from the infected tank, but not at the expense of errors in salinity and temperature. As you become more experienced, you'll know how to make the setup process faster. Step 5. Find a place for each of your transfer buckets. They should be 10 feet away from the infected tank, and since you'll be setting up the next bucket a few hours early to prepare for each transfer, each bucket should be 10 feet away from each other as well as from the display tank. For information on why this is important, you can research aerosol transmission of marine ick. Step 6. Salinity match the water and mark the height. You'll want to test the water that your fish are coming from and match the water in the first transfer bucket to be an exact match. Make sure your salt water is thoroughly mixed before taking measurements. Typically up to four hours is recommended. Once the bucket is filled to the desired height, use a piece of tape on the outside to mark the water height. You'll use this line as your indicator for topping off with fresh water over the next three days. Step seven, place the heater, thermometer, air stone, and PVC into the bucket and stabilize the temperature. Make sure that the heater isn't raising the water temperature too high or allowing it to drop too low. Many cheap, adjustable temp heaters are rather inaccurate in their settings, so be sure to give it a few hours and check the thermometer frequently before moving your fish. Once you're satisfied that the temperature is staying in range, try not to bump the setting from one transfer and cleaning to the next. Step 8. Feed your fish. If your fish are still eating and in a display tank, Feed them in that tank prior to removing them to the transfer bucket. If you have vitamin-fortified additives, such as Celcon, add it to their food. Feeding prior to moving accomplishes two things. One, you can give them a good meal while they're in a familiar environment and they're more likely to eat. And two, it keeps you from having to feed them on day one in a smaller water volume, which would increase the waste in the transfer bucket. Step nine, move the fish into the transfer bucket. If they are in a bag from a purchase, try to let as little water as possible escape from the bag. It helps to drain some of it out in another container first. If they are coming from a display tank, try not to stress them out by excessive chasing with a net. The clear specimen container we recommend for transfers is very helpful in these types of capture the fish games. Step 10. Make a checklist of transfer days. It can get confusing after a couple of transfers, so write down the time you plan to do the transfer as well as which days the transfers land on. About 24 hours after moving your fish to the first transfer bucket, you can give them a small amount of food. Do not overfeed them and siphon out any uneaten food after a few minutes has passed. You do not want excess food waste accumulating in the bucket and causing an ammonia spike. Unless your buckets are overstocked or you are feeding heavily, three days will not be enough time for ammonia to build up, but you can test for it if it brings you peace of mind. Check the water level against the tape that you put on the side of the tank for any evaporation and top off with fresh water if the level has dropped. It is always good to check your thermometer and make sure the temperature is still in an appropriate range and adjust it if needed. That's it. You're done for 24 hours. Repeat the same steps the following day. Early on day three, it's time to begin setting up your next transfer bucket. Make sure to do it with enough time to get the salinity and temperature matched properly. 
Keeping at least 10 feet away from the display tank and the current transfer bucket, set up your new bucket with matching salinity, the second heater, identical PVC, new air pump, and thermometer. Remember, nothing from the other tank goes into this one. Everything is clean and dry. When your time arrives to do the transfer, feed your fish again before they move. This keeps any food waste from the new bucket as long as possible. After they eat, remove the PVC from the dirty bucket and use the clear specimen container to calmly capture your fish. Dump as much water as is feasible back into the dirty bucket and bring just enough water to the new bucket to keep the fish from panicking. Gently use your hand to slide the fish out of the dirty water and out of the specimen container into the new bucket. If you made the items in the new bucket look just like the one they came out of, they may never know that they've moved. As soon as your fish are in the next bucket, empty the dirty bucket and use bleach or vinegar to clean them. And remember that when bleaching, the bleach kills the parasite and the drying makes the equipment safe from the harsh chemicals. It is eventually reduced to salt. When using vinegar, it is the drying process that actually kills the parasite. In either instance, the equipment must be fully dry prior to the next setup in a few days, so keeping them on their side where air can circulate through them, as well as aiming a fan on them, will help ensure complete drying. If anything is wet when you need it next, it could potentially carry either the parasite or bleach, both of which are undesired. Under no circumstance should you ever reuse any of the water that was in your transfer buckets. Consider it toxic waste and don't contaminate it with either the display tank or the new transfer bucket. Check one of your transfers off your list. You're on your way. You'll repeat this process of feeding and topping off each day and transferring and cleaning every third day until the last transfer is complete. From there, your fish can move into their quarantine tank for the next couple of months. Remember to do water changes and do not overfeed the fish. Monitor for ammonia with tests or badges and count down the days until they can go back into their display tank home. If you are doing this process on new fish and your display tank was not infected, it's still recommended to keep the fish in quarantine for a couple more weeks before adding them to the display. Your new fish may be free of ick, but it could still carry other diseases, such as marine velvet or brook. You've come this far, don't give up now. Your first transfer series is complete. You'll be a pro at this in no time, and it does get easier with each round you do. For helpful hints on how to save time, money, and sanity, watch part three of this series next. If you found this video helpful, please like and share so that others can find it. Save a fish's life.